Alhamdulillah La ilaha illallah Wa dahu la shirik allahu I greet everybody with the universal greetings of As-salamu alaykum Inshallah I had like three different titles for the sermon But I said to myself The sermon that I wanted to talk about I needed to get more Ajax to back up what it was I wanted to express. I said, put that to the back burner. So, today's title of the cookbook is called Feeling the Path. Feeling the Path. And inshallah, I'm going to ask God to allow me to relate so we can understand what feeling the path is even though we already know what it is on individual levels of our striving we know what it is feeling the path that's why we're here for Friday, Juma um, I'm going to read from um, Surah 21 Ayat 21 the prophets my Lord, I seek refuge in you from the suggestions of the devils. And my Lord, I seek refuge in you that come in me. Have they found gods on earth who can create? If there were in them the heavens and the earth of the gods besides God, there would have been chaos. Glory be to God, the Lord with absolute authority. He is high above their claims. <coughs> I'm going to be brief because something came to me earlier. God tells us that if there were other gods, there would be chaos, right? Chaos. Now let's take it down to the earth level. We're in this earth, right? There's a lot of chaos in this earth, isn't it? Because man is trying to be God. Right? They're trying to be gods. And they're failing. Right? Right? Because there's so much chaos, right? That's why God, God introduces himself to us. Through prophets, warners, and scripture, God has introduced himself to us when he created us. Because if we would have never been created, we would have not known about the creator. Right? Now let me finish reading. He is never to be asked about anything he does while all others are questioned. Have they found other gods, gods beside him? Say, show me your proof. This is, this is the message to my generation consummating all previous messengers. Indeed, most of them do not recognize the truth. This is why they are so hostile. Check this out. You know why people are so hostile? Because they don't recognize the truth. Right? Think about that. This is what God is telling us. Listen. Listen. Indeed, most of them do not recognize the truth. This is why they are so hostile. So anytime you are dealing with a situation, right, with anybody, right, and you're giving them the truth, and they are hostile to you, then what you do is you reflect back to the book. You say, you know what? I'm not going to go there with them because it's obvious they don't recognize the truth. And you don't waste your time. And also you don't upset yourself. Right? You don't unsettle yourself. You don't unsettle your spirit and your peace of mind and your destiny and your inner comfort. 
right? So now we know what to do. It's in the book. But what, it ha but what has happened to us is they made the book so high up like this and we thought we couldn't reach and understand and touch the meaning of the book and you had to be quote unquote a top notch scholar and a high feast of the Quran and you had to come from a certain tribe and a certain clan and so on and so forth and so what happened was they gave the false interpretation of the book the Quran and all the previous scriptures and this is why there's chaos in the earth on all levels of the earthly existence because when God sends the, prof the prophets, the warners and the messengers right they came with scripture right I'm not going to say all of them okay but they came with scripture they came with a message right and what happened? They brought the truth, right? They face hostility, right? And they face um, prejudices, all kinds of stuff they faced. See, this book is so simple. It's simple. God says it's made the 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 the, 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 the path easy for us to understand. I'm telling you. Okay, let me continue on reading from the Quran. So we know now, because God has told us, indeed most of them do not recognize the truth. He didn't say some of them. He said most of them. Do not recognize the truth. Right? The truth. That's solid right there. This is why they are so hostile. And we got to check ourselves too when the truth comes to us. We can't get hostile either. Okay? Because the book ain't just speaking about them. It's speaking about us too. It's speaking to us. So we're not exempted from what God is saying in the book. Right? So we got to always um, check ourselves. Be on top of ourselves. You know, because we're going to, you know, we're going to make a few errors here and there. It's okay. God knows we're going to do that. God gives us pathways on how to after you make a mistake he gives us pathways on how to clean it up right make amends rebuild reflect right and redirect and change that thinking right right because God deals with the thinking and your thinking brings about what the actions Right? God be glorified. That's right. We did not send any messengers before you except with the inspiration. Mm, mm, mm. Feel good to get some inspiration. Just look at that word, inspiration. <clears throat> I love inspiration. We want to be inspired. Right? Yes. Like James Brown used to say, get on the good foot. We want to be inspired so we can get on the good foot and stay on the good foot. <laughs> right? That's it. That's it. There is no God except me. You should worship me alone. God is introducing himself to us again throughout the book and letting us know. Letting me know. You know them know right so only one God one creator one Lord one master one destiny one aim all that stuff right even though they use many different words it's all saying the same thing even when they associate others with God we can sift through and see the truth even in the madness of that falsehood that they're preaching out there <coughs> we got it we got it so good it ain't about money, property, and prestige. It's about soul power building, being at peace, and loving every minute of it. And also, 
When God says there's no God except me, you should worship me alone. When we are striving in that path, that keeps us out of a whole lot of unnecessary foolishness. Because you'll reflect. Say, hold up. I'm worshiping God alone. I ain't got no time for that. Yet they said, the most gracious has begotten a son. Glory be to him. All messengers are his honored servants. Right? This is what God tells us. He's telling everybody, really. They never speak on their own, and they strictly follow his commands. He knows their future and their past. They do not intercede except for those already accepted by him. And they are worried about their own necks. Check that out. They're worried about their own necks, right? So there's nothing wrong with you worrying about your own neck. You understand? There's nothing wrong with that. Because sometimes you got to like isolate yourself in a far off place. Right? To keep you from joining the crazy bandwagon. That's what I'm going to call it. Right? The crazy bandwagon. You know? Because it's so easily to get emotionally charged up and riled up and emotionally lost in your feelings and emotions and how you feel about a certain thing and this and that. That's why we have to, God willing, keep going back to the book of God. Keep going back. We have to. As I talk to you, I'm talking to me. A lot of times when I get the sermon through God allow me to give it, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> My soul is hearing what I'm saying to the soul. And then we get the energy and it bounces back off. Inspiration. If you are humble and you're striving, God will give you the might of this mighty message. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to a female. He'll give it to a male. He'll give it to a child. That's right. The might of this mighty message. You see, because God controls this message. Right? Not all those people we thought and were taught, they control it. And you got to go to them humbly and this and that in order to get some of the knowledge. No. God says he's the teacher of the Quran. And he has been teaching us for a very, very long time. And just like I made mention in the last sermon, I've been waiting for this all my life. Haven't we been waiting for this all of our lives? Right? To know that when everything else is overwhelming us, we got a safe place we can go to and turn to, right? Right? And be reinvigorated. Generate our generators, right? And get back out there for the next one. Right? Inspiration, once again, we cannot lose. We won't lose. Even when you think you're losing, you're winning. If you believe in what this book is telling you and the other previous scriptures, but more so this book, because it confirms the previous scriptures. It clears up all that. Okay? Read from the Quran, the spirit of the Quran, feeling the path. I'm feeling the path. I'm feeling the path. He knows their future and their past. God knows our future. He knows our past. Right? He know everything we did. Right? Everything we going to do, what we thinking about, right? How we feel about a situation. 
And when you acknowledge that and know that, that keeps you in a state of humility. That keeps you remembering the Creator. They do not, okay, he knows their future and their past. They do not intercede except for those already accepted by him. And they are worried about their own nets. If any of them claims to be a God besides him, we requite, sorry, requite him with hell. We thus requite, requite, I'm sorry, my mouth a little dry, the wicked. Do the unbelievers not realize that the heavens and the earth used to be one solid mass that we exploded into existence? And from water we made all living things? Would they believe? And we placed on earth stabilizers, at least it tumbles with them. And we placed straight roads therein that they may be guided. And we rendered the sky a guarded ceiling that they are totally oblivious to all the potents therein. Once again, God is telling us, right? And I'm going to tell you something, and I'm not saying that we're perfect, we're not perfect, but thank God we are not oblivious. Thank God that we are not oblivious. Think about that. Do you see how fortunate we are when you look at it? Especially if you look at how you used to live before getting this message. Right? Yet they are totally oblivious to all the por portents therein. And he is the one who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon, each floating in its own orbit. Look at your body. Your body is floating in its own orbit. Your heart, your lungs, your brains, your kidneys, your, uh, the, the, the veins, the respiratory system. It's, each is floating in its own orbit. Look at that. It's, it's so simple. It's so simple. God has allowed me, because I'm not going to speak for everybody, because we all, you know, everybody getting it the way that they're getting it, because that's where you are in relation to how God wants you to get it. So I can't impose what I'm getting on you, because you may be getting a, a, a different frequency, and it may be moving you in a different direction from my frequency, but we all are connecting to the highest of the high frequency. Right? 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 So, so, so that's why God says that there is no what? Compulsion. Okay? So, I'm not going to say this. No, 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 no. God tells each and every one of us how he wants us to do what it is that we got to do. On the individual level, then once we strive to do it, then we come back and share what God has allowed us to understand what God has allowed us to see. Right? It's sort of like nourishing food. God nourishes each and every one of us, and we come back and we nourish the community. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's bear with me, because sometimes I just go into that, because Sister Cheryl had pointed out, like you go into another place, <laughs> literally. You being, I'm telling you, you be in another place. And I'm going to be real, that place feels so good. Oh, when I'm in, oh, yeah. We all know what it is, right? We, when you go into that place, it's such a beautiful, peaceful place. I'm telling you. It's just so peaceful. It's tranquility. There's nothing going on. But there's something going on. But there's nothing like that other stuff that's going on. The drama. It's just so peaceful. Peaceful. That's a listen. There's nothing like having a peace of mind, a peace of soul, right? I'm talking about on all levels of your existence, you are experiencing peace. Peace. That's why we say, Assalamu alaikum. Right? 
People, so, you know, some, some people take it literally. No. I'm saying peace be upon you. And if you look at the dynamics of how God gave us the greeting, God is telling us all he ever wanted for us was peace. We the ones that caused the, the chaos and confusion. God says, you know, he's allowed us to say, peace be unto you. Right? Peace be unto you. You. Having that peace of mind. The tranquility. Now let me read back from the book. Okay? <sighs> okay. Now we placed on the earth stabilizers. I'm in the prophets, right? I Act 31, title of the sermon is called Feeling the Path. And we place on earth stabilizers. Lisa tumbles with them. And we place straight roads therein that they may be guided. And we've rendered the sky a guarded ceiling, yet they are totally oblivious to all the potents there. And I reread it, but I'm not going to reread it because it's the book of God. And he is the one who created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, each floating in its own orbit. We never decreed Im immortality for anyone before you. Should you die, are they immortal? Every soul will taste death. After we put you, after you, oh, excuse me, after we put you to the test through adversity and prosperity. Once again, God is introducing what is going to go down while we're here. Right? God said there are going to be some good days and there are going to be some days of tests. I, you know why they say bad days? No, no. You know why? Because God didn't say bad days. God said, Test. Right? Check it out. Through adversity and prosperity. When you look at the word adversity, adversity in itself is a strengthening for you to get through and do something that needs to be done on a higher conscious level within your life. Or else it would not be called adversity. You did. You know what I'm saying? Adversity is bringing you to a place where you need to be, that you may not be. So something got to come along and get your attention, right? So that you can be where it is you need to be. It's like a nudging. Got to be nudged sometimes. Yeah. Just because we are over 40, that don't mean we have stopped being nudged by God. We have stopped being nudged by life. We have to be nudged. Even in all we know now. We got to get nudged. Because what happens? The self is an advocate of vice, right? Right? We get distracted, right? So those nudges are loving caresses from the Creator. When you look at it, God is lovingly caressing you to get in the right direction, to get on the right path, or to become stronger in the path so you can feel the path. And that's when the path is going to be living for you. It will flow like your blood flows through your veins to nourish your body. It will nourish your life. That's how deep this thing is. It's applicable to any given situation that we may go through in this world. And it preps us for the hereafter. So like I said last week, we are tilling our gardens now. We're building our mansions now. So when we get up there, either it's going to be halfway done, right? Fully done or still under construction. Mm -hmm. Depends on what we do now. Right? Okay? Every soul will taste death after we put you to the test through adversity and prosperity. Then to us you ultimately return. 
When those who disbelieve see you, they ridicule you. Is this the one who challenges your gods? Meanwhile, they remain totally heedless of the message from the most gracious. Wow. The human being, God talking to us, the human being is impatient by nature. I will inevitably show you my signs. Do not be in such a hurry. So God is saying, relax, take it easy. You know, relax. They challenge. Where is that retribution if you are truthful? If only those who disbelieve could envision themselves when they tried to ward off the fire off their faces and their backs. No one will help them then. Indeed, it will come to them suddenly and they will be utterly stunned. They can never, excuse me, they can neither avoid it nor, nor can they receive any respite. Ask God to protect us from that. Messages before you have been ridiculed and consequently those who ridicule them incur the retribution for their ridiculing. Say, who can protect you from the most gracious during the night or during the day? Indeed, they are totally oblivious to the message of their Lord. Do they have gods who can protect them from us? They cannot even help themselves, nor can they accompany one another when they are summoned to face us. We have provided for these people and their ancestors up until an old age. Do they not see that every day on earth brings them closer to the end? Can they reverse this process? No. No, they can't. They're trying, right? I forgot the word. Cybergenics is something that they're doing. Ooh, I watched the show. I'm like, wow, they really trying to do that? God says it right here. Can they reverse this process? No. You see how oblivious they are? Say, I am warning you in accordance with divine inspiration. You see that? Divine inspiration. Divine from who? The Creator. Unseen. Right? However, the deaf cannot hear the call when they are warned. Ask God to protect us from that. I don't want to be deaf no more. I don't want to be oblivious no more. I don't want to be out there no more. You understand? I'm serious. Are we feeling this bad here? Right? We don't want to be where we was. We don't want to be, you know, how other people may be. Because sometimes we can see things that other people are doing and we say, man, I should do the same thing. Right? I should react the same way. It's not about bashing and saying I'm above them. No. It's just understanding that there's levels to this life. There's levels to this existence. That's why God say, um, I don't know the exact word, but he says, you know, don't, you know, um, um, don't be so harsh on them because you once was like them. So this is why the book brings about understanding to us. So when we see certain situations, we can understand the plight of that situation. And we won't put our noses up in the air. We'll put our hearts up in the air. You understand that? Because we'll say, man, glory be to God. My Lord has saved me from that doom, right? Simple message. I'm going to wind it down so we can repent. I'm still in the prophets from um, Act 43. Do they have gods who can protect them from us? They cannot even help themselves, nor can they ex accompany one another when they are summoned to face us. We have provided for these people and their ancestors up until their old age. Do they not see that every day on earth brings them closer to the end? Can they reverse the process? On that, inshallah, let us um repent 
Let us repent. Can they reverse this process? Say, I'm warning you in accordance with divine inspiration. However, the deaf cannot hear the call when they are warned. When a sample of your Lord's retribution afflicts them, they readily say we were indeed wicked. We will establish the scales of justice on the day of resurrection. No soul will suffer the least injustice. Even the equivalent of a mustard seed will be accounted for, for we are the most efficient reckoners. We gave Moses and Aaron the statue book, a beacon a remind, and a reminder for the righteous. The ones who reverence their Lord even when alone in their privacy and they worry about the hour. This too is a blessed reminder that we sent down. Are you denying it? No, I'm not, my Lord. Before that, we granted Abraham his guidance and understanding, for we were fully aware of him. He said to his father and his people, What are these statues to which you are devoting yourselves? Now, if you look at the present time now, people are devoting themselves to statues. You understand that, my people? My brothers and my sisters, right? Yeah. Yeah. The behavior has not changed. If the behavior has changed, there would be no need for the final testament. There would have been no need for the messenger of the covenant. There would have been no need for the prophets, right? There would have not been a need for the warners, right? Right? Because everybody would have been doing the right thing, right? But we're not. We're not. So, this loss of you, stay away. They said, we found our parents worshiping them. He said, indeed, you and your parents have gone totally astray. You know what? I think I'm the only submitter in my whole family, in my immediate family. And it's like seven of us. And I'm the only submitter. Yeah. Not bashing, just understanding the journey. See, we got to understand our journey. Because when you appreciate your journey, understand your journey, then you can feel the path. You will feel the path. You will love the path. You'll be happy in the path. Because God says, if you do the prayers, what? the beginning of the day and the ending of the day, do it so what? So that you can be happy. So if you're not happy, it's something you're not doing right. And I'm talking to myself too. If I'm walking around at the, let me lower my voice. If I'm walking around with this, with this, and I'm unhappy, I got to look at something that I'm not doing right. Because God promise is the truth. Right? So if I'm walking around fearful, unhappy, worrying, and all this stuff, it's something that I'm not doing right. And I have to increase my faith, my taqwa, my iman in this. That's what feeling the path is about. You're walking, feeling the path, and you're just a happy camper. You're happy about everything because you know who God 
has blessed you. God been blessing you and getting you through and getting you through and getting you through and getting you through. Now you got to take the information and get you through. Because we're reading the book. Right? You get the information right, from God to get you through. And it's a continuing of getting through. Because when something pop up, it's all like you on a computer, you get a pop up, right? When life pops up, you pop into the book. Right? You go to this book. You better. You better. Because we can easily go get a drink, go get some drugs, go hurt somebody, right? Or go do all those insane things that people do, right? When life pops up, right? Right? But we got the spiritual pop up, right? That addresses how do we handle those emotions, right? When they come floating down life's rivers and oceans. Okay? I'm going to wind it down. God be glorified. Lord of the earth, Lord of the heavens, Lord of the universe. God be glorified. Lord of the earth, Lord of the heavens, Lord of the universe. God be glorified. Lord of the earth, Lord of the heavens, Lord of the universe. Because God tells us that the true believers, they will not fear, they will not grieve, because God will give them understanding of what's going on. Like Marvin Gaye used to say, what's going on, right? God is letting us know what's going on, right? He's letting us know. And he's setting us up and positioning us to handle What's going on? Yeah, because Mama said there'll be days like this. Yes. <laughs> there'll be days like this, Mama said. Mama knew something. Mama knew about God alone. Right? We've been getting prepped all our lives. All our lives. We've been prepped when you were swimming up there. Trying to fertilize that egg. You were being prepped. Yes. And when you came out, right? And moms, right? And some of us had mom and dad. Whoever was nurturing us, they was prepping us. Right? Right? And we came out. We tried to walk. We stumbled and we fell, right? We were prepping to learn how to properly walk, right? And then we started walking upright, right? We were being prepped through the tests, right? And adversities, right? And we were being prepped. You know why? Because it brought us to this moment of our lives right now, baby. We are here. And it feels good to be here. I'd rather be here than be in jail. Right? I'd rather be here than be strung out on alcohol and drugs. Right? I'd rather be here than be out there homeless, wandering aimlessly through the land. Right? Don't even know who I am, devoid of myself. Right? But with this, all the voids are removed. Right? Feeling the path. Right? Right? So happy to be here. Say it. I'm so happy to be here. And I love you, God. That's right. That's right. God be glorified. I'm going to wind it down. I'm winding it up, but I'm going to wind it down.
Because God, like I said, God has introduced himself to us constantly reintroducing to us. Yeah, this thing is repetitious here. Look at Salat, five times a day, right? Repetitious. Why is that? Because we are building our souls, right? I didn't know that. I never knew that when I was practicing old Islam. I didn't know that. I knew I was doing something and it felt good, but I didn't know the fullness of what I was doing until God sent us the message of the covenant. Right? And then I, I started understanding, oh, what, my soul becomes this big when I do, whoa, I want to do more of that. I want to do more. It's like when you go to the gym or, you know, you're trying to eat healthy, you're trying to uh, 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 um, um, be around more positive people and do certain things. You are building muscles, spiritual muscles, soul mus muscles, emotional muscles. There's a lot of dynamics to this building. So when something happens, you are strong and it don't overcome you, and it don't overwhelm you, and it don't confuse you, because you've been building yourself up. Prep, being prepped. <coughs> Inspiration feels so good. God be glorified. Just bear with me. We still in the prophets. They said, are you telling us the truth or are you playing? He said, your only Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth who created them. This is the testimony to which I bear witness. We bear witness. I swear by God, I have a plan to deal with your statues as soon as you leave. He broke them into pieces except for a big one that they may refer to it. They said, whoever did this to our gods <laughs> is really a transgressor. They said, we heard a youth threaten them. He is called Abraham. Let me say this. He was a youth when he did this. He wasn't a fool, right? So listen, you know what God is telling us? That it's going to be the youth, the youth. It's going to be the ones, if they awaken consciously, that's going to bring about the change in the world. Because guess what? If we go back in time, who was it that brought about that change? A youth called Abraham. Ibrahim. Right? It don't change. It gets better. Okay? Okay. They said, bring him before the eyes of all the people that they may bear witness. They said, did you do this to our gods, O Abraham? Abraham proves one. He said, it, it is the big one who did it. <laughs> you see that? Do you see that? Woo. Do you understand that? He said, it is the big one who did it. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, I'm not laughing at no, but it's kind of comical because he was so wise in his youth and they were so dumb and they were older than him. I'm not going to call them dumb. They were unaware. They were unaware. Okay? And dumb. <laughs> now check this out. He's, it is the big one who did it. Go ask them if they can speak. <laughs> Oh my God. They were taken aback and said to themselves, Indeed, you are the ones who have been transgressing. Yet they reverted to their old ideas. You know full well that these cannot speak. He said, do you then worship besides God what possesses no power to benefit you or harm you? 
in closing. <coughs> so, just from this statement alone, <coughs> do you then worship besides God who possesses no power to benefit you or harm you? We have to always be aware of where we are giving most of our allegiance to and our attention to and our energy to. If we're not giving foremost our energy to the Creator, our direction to the Creator, our mindset to the Creator, and when we are in our goings and doings, we have the Creator foremost in our higher visions. Because we know it is God who is the one that is allowing us to do what it is that we are doing. And on that, let's make prayer.